Hello all, it's James Johnson, aka Sulphur Blade, and I have a rather boring, um, a rather boring visual aid that I'm going to utilize for the purpose of this particular video. You might be able to figure out where I'm going with this by just looking at uh, what's written on the screen, but I'm going to explain it as, well, as best I can. I'm, I'm not the most eloquent speaker, but uh, sometimes I can make rational thoughts. Let's hope that today is one of those. So we're going to go back to the 1980s, uh, to a time when life in the United States was a little simpler, so to speak. So we were, this was the time of, of Reagan of trickle-town economics and the Iran-Contra scandal and, and bringing down the wall. It was indeed a simpler time frame where most Americans, if they had any type of political uh, inclinations, uh, they were typically railing about either uh, the reduction of taxes or the increase of taxes, so on and so forth. Taxes was the primary political focus of the 80s. Um, Reagan's tax cuts were very, shall I say, uh, controversial. However, if you're going to have political conversations, political conversations about taxes, well, they make sense. That's the purpose of government. Government is there to regulate the tax structure, to manage the country, you know, the, the following other things that were on people's minds in the 80s when it came to politics, like welfare, for instance. Uh, again, very sensible political things. These, you know, Democrats and Republicans talked about these things quite often. Uh, Democrats feared that Reagan might destroy uh, Social Security. Um, they they worried Reagan might uh, harm welfare. Uh, they. Uh, Reagan most certainly uh, attempted to cut uh, lots of taxes to include taxes that would fund these systems. Um, to uh, uh, create trickle-down economics, if you will, to uh, try to stimulate the economy. This this was Reagan's way of thinking, and this was the primary uh, the primary ground-shaking conversation that happened in the 80s. It usually revolved around taxes. And what more sensible thing could Democrats and Republicans disagree on than taxes, because it's actually something that that should matter to somebody in government. Then you also had, you know, communism. We were still fighting against the Soviet Union. We were still amidst the Cold War, or, come, or trying to bring it to an end. Uh, but communism, the 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 shared enemy of the state for all people, uh, certainly. Uh, kept our country united in a more patriotic wave. Uh, I feel like people, well, I know people in the 80s were far less divided than they are now, and I think it's in part because we were all scared of the big bad Soviet Union. Um, we, had a, we had a common foe, a common, common purpose. Uh, then we had, you know, the whole, this was the nuclear age, right? This was the, the salt talks, the, the dearmament of nuclear weapons, uh, and right along with that was nuclear power. Was it good or was it bad? Uh, what did we need to do about nuclear power, etc.? Unfortunately, the 80s kind of 
uh, cleared way for what we could call kind of the nuclear power uh, exiting stage left. We we really haven't we really haven't ever really recovered from the whole nuclear scares of the 80s, especially with like uh, Chernobyl and and stuff like that happening. Uh, nuclear power was and could have been uh, the obvious fix to the world's power problem, but it it was a scary, controversial topic of the time, one that we chose to hide from, I suppose. And then you had positive feminism um, back in the eighties when you talked about feminism. Nobody, nobody was remotely on an opposing side because everyone felt that uh, that women should have equal opportunity in the workplace. They should, they should, you know, uh, have the same opportunities to succeed. And most everyone supported feminism in the eighties. It, it still, it wasn't hijacked. It wasn't derailed yet. And then you had the kind of the trailing end of the space race uh, in the 80s. So, again, a, a, another thing the country could rally around um, that helped unite the country was, was uh, our pride in, in NASA and, you know, being the first to do things. Though that was also in the, probably more prevalent in the 70s, but it it kind of translated into the 80s too. Um, in the 90s, we again, uh, you know, politicians were still very concerned with taxes and very concerned with welfare and government regulation. These these were key things that politicians talked about, debated about, argued about. These were the primary. The primary uh, government issues, as they should be, those 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 are those are what should main those should be the maintaining uh, factors between parties inside of a capitalist republic. Those things right there: taxes, welfare, government regulation, are logical logical dividing places that aren't you know aren't beyond coming to some sort of middle ground they're they're not uh Im impossible to live with so to speak if you, if you want to raise taxes or if you want to cut taxes those are logical aspirations that can be had with debate and reasoned out according to the situation. Raising or cutting welfare funds, same thing. Government regulation, uh, adding more regulation or taking away regulation. Again, sensible things that that people on, on, on uh, either side of the aisle can look at and come to some sort of middle ground. Environmental regulations really started to start to rear their ugly heads in the 90s. Not, not necessarily that it was a bad thing. It's that uh, uh, they kind of sprung up on, I guess, the American people quickly. And that was because there were a lot of uh, necessary reasons for environmental regulations to start getting more stringent as we started having horrible horrible nightmare situations where industry were were polluting lakes and streams and and causing serious health concerns um, uh, uh, industry uh, uh, not, uh, yeah industry wasn't wasn't doing a good job holding themselves to uh, account. They were they were definitely concerned with the bottom dollar, and we certainly needed environmental regulations in the 90s to start fixing some of these issues. Uh, with the with the fall of of communism and with the Soviet Union vanishing as our big bad. 
uh, we certainly started to focus a hell of a lot more on the Middle East. Is it because it's where most of the oil was? Possibly. Was it important that uh, we could keep an oil supply while uh, our environmental regulations were was choking our own energy sector? Yeah, probably. So th those two things kind of went hand in hand. Our increased focus on the Middle East and being able to get oil at a at a you know a, a cost effective uh, way with because our environmental regulations were choking off our own en energy industry and we still had feminism in the 90s though I, w I would call it neutral feminism it, it still hadn't really started to rear its ugly head however it was getting to the point where feminism really wasn't needed anymore women had for the most part won their place in the workforce they've got they had gotten their equal pay um, were there a few uh, instances where feminism could still have used a champion? Sure. You know, there were always a few industries that were slower to adopt to, to you know, equal pay and equal opportunity for females. But by and large, by the 90s, things were pretty relevant and pretty even, or at least certainly trending in the right direction. But by and large. However, abortion, the abortion concerns started to really ramp up. Oddly, uh, while abortion was always a hot topic even in the 80s and, and before that, it was never quite ever so much of a hot topic as in an age where a, a, a woman was more and more commonly head of household so in a way feminism kind of pushed abortion to the forefront I would say in the 90s but the things about abortions and the uh, abortion in the forefront of the 90s is that the topic was being pushed uh, in beyond ways where the where the common ground was no longer common ground. So even the most fervent anti-abortion people, oh, I don't want to say the most fervent. In today's age, the most fervent anti-abortion people truly believe that there, there never should be abortion in any case, even if the woman's dying to hell with abortion, uh, save the child, right? I think that's a bit stringent. Just a little bit. Back in the 90s, there, there was, you know, a middle ground. First trimester for various reasons. Okay, abortion is sound. We can go with that. We, we, the, there was a subset of, of shared reasons that both sides could understand in the 90s is when though that that shared equilibrium started to get pushed apart where, where they started wanting oh no second trimester third trimester uh you know any time a woman wants yada 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 etc etc um, and now abortion is the hot topic that it is today because it started separating in the 90s. <clears throat> Global trade. Uh, again, here we were, I guess, kind of navigating a new world. Uh, certainly nations have been trading for millennia, but never quite as easily, you know, the we were certainly in a new age where you had amazingly fast flying cargo planes that were getting ever so bigger. Uh, shipping technology was, you know, shipping 
technology and chipping had just gotten so much better. And in the 90s, of course, communication had certainly started to reach new heights. And so the world was becoming a smaller place. It was easier to to talk with the world. The globalism was just kind of starting to begin. And so global trade was certainly at a whole brand new point. Um, and the U.S. thought at that point in time was, you know, we are the... We are the financial powerhouse of the world. We could send industries over to some of these weaker countries, um, and we could then focus on more high-tech industry. Or the, you know, that's the way it was explained to us, right? So we we willingly sent away some of our um, lower tech manufacturing. Uh, because it was going to be offset with high-tech manufacturing. Well, that didn't exactly work out that way. Uh, world policing, that was another kind of hotbed. We, you know, we, we were growing more and more involved in various small conflicts around the world, especially in the Middle East, because we had to secure the oil. And free speech. Um, Free speech has always kind of been under attack in our country, though various different parties through the years, well, I shouldn't say various different parties, for the majority of, of the time, uh, Republicans were the party that was typically attacking free speech. We were, we were slightly more authoritarian in regards to censorship, especially in the 90s. In the 90s, uh, the Democrats were more of the more the champions that were uh, holding free speech as as uh, being important. And now that's that's completely flip flopped in in the year 2020. In the year 2020, it is by and large Republicans who are the champions of free speech. But you know. That's that's just how things go. So basically, if you look at the 90s, you look at the 80s and 90s, we, we had our issues, right? But it was never it was never something that completely tore our country apart. It was never something that we couldn't find common ground on. It was usually the normal the normal agenda, the normal uh, slew of things that you would expect to have politicians debate, like taxes, welfare, and government regulations. That is what government should debate. That, that Those should be, well, at least a capitalist republic, those should be the hallmark uh, concerns that separate parties, right? Because we are a capitalist republic bizarre extreme communist notions have no place in a capitalist republic well after the 90s we had a lot of uh we had some issues that i would say were hijacked they were kind of used as like a trojan horse a way to to latch on to these uh topics and exploit them for things beyond the topics themselves like for instance healthcare drug prices tuition reform feminism and gay rights this is where uh feminism really started to go bad uh of course you had gay rights most people were for gay rights most people weren't uh, were basically of the conclusion what people want to do behind their closed doors fine you know just leave me out of it I don't care be happy live your life uh, tuition reform it made sense to some of these colleges were becoming far too expensive 
uh, we need to find ways to keep our our youth going to college. Tuition reform was one of those, but we needed to to bring down the cost of education, not make it free for everybody. That that's that's how t tuition reform has been hijacked into oh, let's make it free for everyone. Free college for all. Um again, drug prices. That was that was a big stringent uh, thing. Is that the cost of drug prices were, were was becoming a hardship, and that was because of you know insurance and big pharma, and there were ways to deal with drug prices. In fact, Donald Trump has actually tackled that issue, and we're going to be seeing drug prices come down here in 2021 because Trump's program actually takes effect. The day Biden goes into office, so he's going to look like he's the hero in drug prices, which is a bunch of bullshit. But anyway, um, <clears throat> healthcare, drug prices, those were hot topics amongst uh, populace, amongst general people. And they were used to push the whole kind of globalism agenda. Uh, other countries have free healthcare. Why don't we? Other countries have have free college. Why don't we? We need to be like Germany. We need to be like France. We need to be like England. We need to be like Australia. We need to be like New Zealand. Australia doesn't have any guns. Why do we have guns? You know, globalism is, in my opinion, the most dangerous threat our country has ever faced. Uh... We're forgetting who we are as Americans. We're forgetting why America is great. We're forgetting our history. Now we're in the year 2020. And what used to be a sensible thing that politicians were concerned with taxes, welfare, government regulation, those those don't even get talked about anymore those those are i i i would say almost ignored or they're just a inconvenient part of government now it's environmental emergencies the planet is going to cease to be in 14 years if we don't act now it's COVID-19. COVID-19 is so bad, it's killing 0.3% of our populace every day. We need to shut everything down. You can't go anywhere. What? Authoritarian, tyrannical government has never existed like it exists today in 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 america we didn't have this type of authoritarian author, authoritarian culture we we this never existed this is horrible this is it's not something normal americans can live with we we can't reconcile the destruction to our civil liberties based off of 0.003% of the country dying. The two don't add up. If you're going to take away our civil liberties, half the country better be dying. It, this is this is ridiculous. This is it doesn't make sense. And we have racism. Oh, the wonderful world we live in today where everything is about racism where whites are are privileged just because they were born white and they need to apologize to the fact that they're born white go fuck yourselves with that stupidity i'm sorry but the people who believe that that because you were born a certain skin color means that you're either uh, you need to apologize for your forefathers? That's racism. 
100%. I cannot live with people that think with that type of attitude. No. I say no. Sexism. The whole feminism taken to a new extreme where we need to give that political position to her because we haven't had a female vice well we have we've had a oh, Geraldine Trown, da, da. I don't know have we had a female vice president anyway um, whether we have or not the person should be the most meritorious person for the job not picked because of what's between her legs that doesn't fucking make sense S feminism has has gone off the deep end it's it's a it's it's nothing you can't recognize what it used to be it's 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 gone a long way since uh the good the good ism it used to be in the 80s where everyone admired anyone who was championing feminism to being the picture of some crazy dyke with purple hair nose ring uh, pointing her finger or poking her finger in the chest of a man saying he needs to get on his knees and kiss her fucking feet. <clears throat> quotas. Well, I just went over quotas. Quotas is, is where you have to have, you know, minorities represented in this and that and have women represented in this and that and have female minorities represented in this and that because reasons not because they're most not because they're the best person for the job but because we have to fill a fucking quota no that's bullshit there's no place for that in society there's no place for that in my in in a society that i would be able to accept Gender change for minors. In what world is it acceptable for a minor to make a life-altering decision about what sex they should be? Fuck no. That's, that's irresponsibility. Anyone who, any parent that allows their kid to make such a life-altering change should be thrown in jail. Period. But we live in a world where that type of behavior is, is socially acceptable. Are you fucking kidding me? Bedtime stories from transvestites. What? Kids should not be subjected to creepy, perverted men wearing women's clothing at all. This is lunacy at its finest. Cancel culture. The woke SJW narrative. We all know what it is. We've seen it firsthand all the time. Most Americans cannot stand it. We don't want anything to do with it. But the insane love left and their identity politics, they love it. Evil feminism. I already, you know, I've, I've gone over this back in, yeah. The destruction of history. Our history is being torn down right before our eyes. Thanksgiving, supposedly a bad holiday. Christmas, supposedly a bad holiday. Fourth of July, supposedly a bad holiday. Everything is being corrupted. Our entire history, our entire culture 
is being torn down before our eyes. But the left says, oh, it's fine. Nothing to see here. It's all good. Christopher Columbus is bad. Colonialism is bad. We all need to apologize to the American Indians. Blah, blah, and blah, blah, and blah, blah. Destruction of our culture goes hand in hand with the destruction of our history. You know, we, we see it all the time. It's real simple. You know, look at what they did to Star Trek. Look at what they did to Star Wars. Look at what they did to He-Man. Look at what they did to the Thundercats. Look at what they've done to the Ghostbusters. I mean, you you, you, you can name, you can insert just about any uh, movie from the 80s and 90s that's been remade or redone in the year 2020 and it makes you want to gag. They're rewriting our culture. To fund the police, well, we see how well that's working out, aren't we? Crime is up higher than it's ever been in these places that thought it was a good idea to defund the police. Fucking Looney Tunes. Lunacy. <clears throat> Antifa. They set up another frickin' chop in Portland. A Chaz, whatever you want to call it, an autonomous zone. Yeah, the Red House Autonomous Zone. Downtown Portland. Well, no, kind of downtown. North, north something-ish Portland. But still, you get the point. Bail. It used to be if someone got arrested, at least spent a little bit of time in in lockup. Now, oh, uh, you killed someone? All right. Well, here you go. Here's 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 when your your court. Uh, uh, come on back in two months. As, and you'll stand trial for the uh, murder of so and so. Please don't kill anyone while you're while you're out there. Next day, kill somebody else. The bail system is just it's it's bizarre. Useless attorney generals goes right along with that whole bail system. They're the ones that that have allowed people to be released who never should be released so that they can just keep reoffending and they're not being held accountable because of useless attorney generals all over this country who don't bother to actually try anyone nothing to see here oh you uh you did what you you uh, took a shat in the middle of downtown and then you shot up with some crazy drugs and jerked off on the sidewalk well people walked past why are you even why are you even here none of that's illegal right Dis case dismissed get out of here go shit some more in downtown and get high and jerk off in front of children. Uh, that's 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 the world we live in these days. <clears throat> Spying on own people. Edward Snowden and and Julian Assange have made that perfectly clear to us that that our intelligent apparatus has been used against us, but we're all fine with it. In fact, some of us on the left are all for it. Fuck. <clears throat> Stealing an election. We know this election's been stolen. It's clear as a bell. But no matter what we do, there's nothing we can do to stop it. We've we've tried. We've we've done every We've done everything. But the left won't won't budge. Please do a signature recount in Georgia. 
No. Hey, look at this video where people counted thousands of ballots without being supervised. Huh, shocking. Please do a signature verification in Georgia. Governor's like, well, I guess in light of this new evidence, we could do a signature verification in Georgia. Next day, Georgia's governor's daughter's boyfriend gets blown up in an insane car crash. And he's like, you know what? That signature verification? Nah, we don't need to do that. What? Are you fucking kidding me? <clears throat> the obvious purposeful relaxation of voting laws. How should it be legal to not sign your ballot? I don't understand that. How should it be legal to have an address that doesn't even have a house or plumbing or an outhouse or a tent or anything on it? It's a vacant fucking lot. Oh, that's fine. You should be able to use a vacant lot, right? As an address? Sure, why not? Voting in two states, that should be highly illegal. Oh, what, what, what's, I don't see anything wrong with that. Go ahead, vote in two states. Voting from the dead. Oh, that's, that's, that's how he wanted to vote. Are you kidding me? I mean... It makes the head spin. Free health care. That, that's the mantra these days. Health care should be free because other countries have free health care. Oh, great for other countries. How are we going to pay for said free health care? Oh, it'll pay for itself. Will it now? Free college, too. How are we going to pay for free college? Oh, I don't care. It'll pay for itself. The, the, the increase in education will make citizens more productive, and thus uh, the, there'll be more high-paying jobs, thus more tax revenue. Oh, okay, yeah. If you put it like that, I'm, I'm sure it's going to work out perfectly. Um, free money. Yeah, well, you know, why do we even have to work? We, we should just, you know, not work. According to AOC, she, she thinks that uh, work is a uh, some sort of capitalist trick, where we're abusing people by making them work. <gasps> we we should live in a society without money, where where everyone gets a a plate of ble bread and a, a glass of water. Oh, great. Worked for the Soviet Union, didn't it? Communist spies. Hello, Eric Swalwell, or whatever your name is, Congressman Swalwell, where you're going to rail about Donald Trump Jr. being in in some pocket of of a, a Russian spy while you're sleeping with a communist Chinese spy for actual reals. But you know, that's the world we live in. Fake news. You know, where nothing of actual relevance can be reported that could have major ramifications on the fucking election, like, oh, Joe Biden getting ton billions upon billions of dollars from China through his crackhead son? Nothing to see here. This isn't news. No, no, these aren't the droids we're looking for. And of course, corru corrupt Hollywood, who's just another propaganda arm of the deep state. That's the world we live in. It's very different from the 80s and 90s, folks. I can testify to that. Because unlike a bunch of you who weren't alive in the 80s and 90s, I was. And 
our country is going to shit. We're on a train going 120 miles per hour towards a cliff. And we're not slowing down. In fact, the train is getting faster. And we're going to fly off that cliff very soon. Because that entire list of 2020 bullshit has nothing to fucking do with taxes, welfare, government regulations. That's what politicians should be fucking concerned with. Not all this social justice bullshit. Social justice bullshit is the purview of the actual American people. If you don't like someone who's a gay transvestite person, then you go to the other side of the room, or you leave the fucking establishment. Public... The public regulates itself. Social justice warfare concepts are not things that government should be concerned with. They are the realm of the populace. COVID-19 is an issue. Yes. It's an issue that Americans should be informed about and then allowed to make a risk factor decision with their own fucking brain and then left alone. If they decide they'd rather go watch the Daytona 500, then they go fucking watch the Daytona 500. If they choose to not wear a goddamn mask at the Daytona 500 and they get COVID, whose fault is it but their own? That's the way things are supposed to work in the United States. Civil liberties are to be respected, not trampled over. The world we live in today is not a place many of us can live in. It is beyond irreprehensible. It is not a place where most of us can even begin to fathom compromising in. It is beyond compromise And you wonder how people are asking to succeed currently after our election was stolen out from underneath us illegitimately? We need, well, you need to move to red states and the red states need to decouple from this union. It's time to succeed. It's time to divorce this crazy bullshit. Let them run themselves into the dirt with their bizarre fucking concepts but it's time that normal Americans normal patriotic Americans that understand our culture our history what makes America great it's time we band together get the fuck out of the blue states and decouple from this union it's time to succeed it's time to tell your congressmen and your senators that enough is enough. We can't live with these people anymore. They're too fucking far gone. 
They're nuts. They're irredeemable. And that's my video, folks. I'm James Johnson, a.k.a. Sulphur Blade. This is my content. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If so, please leave a like and subscribe. And until the next time, all, peace.